Hello, hello, folks. I am live. Let me pull back the music volume a little bit. Yeah, we'll keep it right around there. We need to add more. Okay. And let me check. Um, I see myself, obviously, and I hear myself. Audio meter is looking good. So, yeah, I see the chat room filling up. Uh, folks, if you have uh, a hard time hearing me, please let me know and I shall adjust. All right. Hey, hey. Uh, hello, that's my good friend Ivana uh, in the chat room. The Tiger, good morning, good morning. And I see I am GMD. Uh, I don't know how to read your uh, name there, but uh, hello from UK. So, yeah, good morning if you are joining us uh, from the Americas. Uh, good afternoon, good late evening if you are in Asia Pacific, uh, Middle East, Africa, anywhere else in the world. And uh, thank you. Yes, Tiger, thanks for confirming uh, that I look good. You know, I mean, you know what I bring to the table. I look good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm getting old. I'm tired all the time. Uh, but um, yeah, I, um, I put something out uh, before we started. Uh, there is obviously uh, a lot going on in the world uh, right now with the pandemic. Um, I'm here in the U.S., uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, and obviously a lot going on. Uh, a lot of us are very emotional, and there's a lot to take in. Uh, we are all trying to listen and, and learn and amplify the voices that uh, need to be heard, because like social justice is for everybody. This is not just uh, for specific people of color. This is for everybody. This is how we all get better. And um, there is uh, there's a lot of hurt and pain, and uh, the best we can do is learn. Uh, learn and get better at this, have more empathy, and just move together. And I think in the tech industry, we can all do step up to be uh, better, uh, to be more welcoming of everybody. So with that, um, let's uh, let's dive in. Um, I have been a little bit, again, again, most of us have been a little bit on radio silence because of everything that's going on. We are conscious uh, of, of everything, but uh, we have to move forward. So um, I'm stepping out today with uh, just kind of tinkering around. Um, I come from a heavy uh, Xamarin uh, background, uh, XAML background. I did some WPF and um, uh, UWP back in the days, WinForms uh, and, and Windows Phone, so I'm old. Uh, so uh, I want to tinker around a little bit as to what is going on with uh, the next uh, version of .NET and in particular what's going on with Xamarin and Xamarin forms the whole evolution. You may have heard about Maui, so uh, let's dive in. So let me make sure I uh, close out the things that I don't need here. All right, here is my mouse bar. Okay, so you're looking at my desktop. So um, Microsoft build happened um, uh, late May or middle of May, and we got to hear about um, the direction in which uh, .NET is going. Uh, Ivana is saying, I say redeem hydrate every time. <laughs> You're going to hear that a lot from me. I am old. Yes, uh, let's all hydrate and take care of each other. All right, and folks who are new here in the chat room, um, we are coded live and uh, you're going to see us uh, stream about lots of different types of technologies throughout the week. It's, it's a team game here. Um, so we do uh, Site Trinity CMS type stuff on Mondays, podcast recordings. We do uh, Unity on Tuesdays. We do React and we do UI on Wednesdays. And we do Xamarin on Thursdays, which is my favorite time of the week. And then Fridays, we just kind of go a little casual with the chat show. So whenever your time permits, uh, please, please come and join us and hang out with us. We, we love you. Um, so, like I was saying, uh, .NET is evolving. So, I'm looking at uh, a specific post here by Scott Hunter, who's actually a good friend to many of us. Uh, he's the program uh, owner for a lot of .NET. So, uh, they put out these posts about where things are headed with .NET and uh, Maui in particular for all things uh, mobile and, and desktop and how you do cross-platform. So I wanted to maybe um, start with .NET 5. I had a few screenshots uh, from a presentation that some of the Microsoft folks did, so I'm blatantly stealing here, but these are good like talking points for us. So um, you, ha you all have seen these things, I'm sure. Uh, I'll try to get into the weeds a little bit today, but actually these are very early days, so there's actually not much to get into in terms of Maui, but we'll tinker around and um, 
if you want to join me next Thursday, it's going to be super awesome because we'll take a deeper dive into Maui because I have a special guest uh, joining us next Thursday. So .NET 5. So this is something, folks, we can expect um, this September or maybe November, actually, is when the .NET Conf is. So you're going to see um, uh, full-on release bits for .NET 5. And this is a big deal because it's trying to unify .NET as we know it, because uh, right now you have, so there are two things with .NET, right? There is the base class libraries, which is what makes the frameworks work, and then there's the tooling that goes with it, which is all the SDKs. And right now there are base class libraries for .NET framework, and uh, .NET Core, which is about four years old. There's Mono, which is what runs uh, Xamarin. Uh, there's something for Unity. So there are a few other options around. So they're trying to unify all of it into one thing and uh, try to push that out in .NET 5. So it's a, it's a big endeavor on their end. Um, and so this is coming by the end of this uh, year. So Cloud Native, uh, lots of improvements here and there. And then what else do you see? Okay, so uh, one more .NET 5 slide. So .NET Core SDK is going to be renamed just .NET SDK. So there is no .NET Core and .NET Framework anymore. It's just all one .NET. Uh, so Blazor, this is big. You see us talking about Blazor. My good friend Ed uh, has devoted his life to Blazor, and it's awesome. Blazor is um, was server side SignalR front and back, uh, but then starting this build, they pushed out WebAssembly bits. So Blazor is now client side and server side C sharp, which is uh, fantastic. And actually, uh, what time is it? Uh, 10.07 here am for me. I actually have a hard stop at 11 because um, Ed has uh, a bunch of different things he wants to show off with Blazor and he's got a guest. So if I don't get done by 11, he's likely going to come and kick me off. And uh, Ivana and other folks in, in our team will likely kick me off. So I have a hard stop today. Um, so uh, lots of things going on. WinForms, um, WPF, they all run on .NET Core, and they will all run on .NET 5, which is great. Uh, so these are some of the slides that I could pull together. And let's see. Okay. So let's talk about Xamarin, because that's the thing that I care about. So when it comes to Xamarin, we have always had uh, three distinct things that we did, right? So there was Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android. So these were how Xamarin first started. This was where we first started writing C sharp code and we wrote heads for the different platforms like iOS, Android, and, and Windows. Um, that gets rolled into um, .NET itself. So you should have more confidence going in. I should have more confidence because this will be maintained by the same .NET teams. They are, in fact, ramping up on program managers and, and folks who do tooling. So that's all great. Uh, so Xamarin iOS will just be called .NET for iOS, and Xamarin Android will be called Xamarin or .NET for Android. And nothing really changes because those are essentially just pass-throughs. They give you access to the native APIs, and then you build your own uh, own UI. So not much going on. What is new, and this is exciting to me, I'm a big fan of CLI tooling because uh, it gives you the cross-platform reach, you can do this from Linux and Mac and everywhere. So uh, for the first time, uh, Xamarin comes to CLI and it's going to be more inbuilt, um, uh, more in line with the .NET side of the tooling. Because I think what we do nowadays with Xamarin is a lot of MS build stuff in, in, uh, in Visual Studio. And I'll, I'll show you that a, li a little bit as to where some of those differences still lie. But uh, you should be able to do .NET build and .NET new. Uh, with Xamarin, which is exciting because now you can do .NET install iOS, .NET new iOS, and then .NET run uh, iOS over a simulator. So that's all great. So uh, that's what's coming in .NET, and this is um, for .NET 5, and this is going to hit this year. But then comes Maui, which uh, actually got a little pushback. So we'll, we'll talk about this. Um, so this is Maui, and it's a uh, it's a pet name. I think they tossed around a few um, ideas. Okay, chat room, uh, redeem, hide an egg in your code. Yeah, I'm not writing code yet, but I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to see what I can do. Uh, here's the tricky thing. It's very early days, and this is what um, we, like, we are Microsoft partners. Um, a lot of us here are uh, Microsoft MVP, so that we work very closely with Microsoft, and we keep giving them feedback, like, work with us ahead of time, do everything in the public and let us chime in. And I think that's what's happening. It's it's out in the open, but there is just 
very early days. So there is not many things to play around with. So I'll tinker a little bit with code. I'll show you what we have right now. So this thing is out. It's multi-platform app UI, kind of affectionately named Maui. Um, and this um, this is fun for me because I, I love Hawaii. I've been there a couple of times. We actually went on our honeymoon to Maui. So I have fond memories. It's a beautiful place in the island. It's a beautiful island. Uh, has got a lot lot to do with it. Um, and so it, this just kind of uh, landed nicely in terms of how you want to call it. So it's called Maui. So what it is, is it's going to be a shim that lets us do what Xamarin Forms used to do for iOS and Android. But we can open it up uh, a little bit more to be able to support desktop uh, platforms as well, which is Windows and Mac OS, which is nice. Now, we we did have um, a PR into the Xamarin Forms um, uh, GitHub repo, which let us do um, target or which let us target Mac as a platform for uh, Xamarin Forms. But this is going to be a little more baked in. Um, and it's going to just run out of the box. So four things we get, iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac um, to support. So SDK-style projects, single-headed CLI support, which I really love, um, .NET Core BCL. So it's in, ter in terms of what's under this uh, thing, I think it's just the best parts of .NET Core and uh, Mono. So they're not dropping either of them. It's just they're combining them into one, which is why you get the rich native um, API access and toolkit. So this is all good. And we'll talk about some of these multi-paradigm things because there are multiple ways in which we can layer up the UI stack, which is nice. So let's go to um, Scott's post here. Um, and we'll tinker a little bit with what's out on GitHub and see um, if there's anything we can work with. So, okay, .NET Platform. Um, this is pretty much what we just talked about, deploy to multiple devices, mobile and desktop, uh, evolution of Xamarin Forms. So if you're really hung up on the Xamarin Forms moniker or the, the name, yes, it's evolving into something something better. So it's uh, it's Maui. Uh, and again, Xamarin iOS and Android become part of .NET. So again, I think all of these things should just give us more confidence. Now, here's the thing that changed. It is, Maui is actually right now targeted for .NET 6, which is an LTS version, it's a long time support version of .NET, and it is meant to hit in um, in November of 2021, which is a good like year and a half away. So we have quite a bit of runway, quite a bit of time before we get there. So the tooling and everything, I think will just mature, um, but we will start seeing previews of Maui tooling right at the end of this year. So right after they ship .NET 5, uh, they're saying they will drop previews of .NET 6, and that's going to have Maui tooling. So we can start playing around and building uh, stuff with it. But if you are doing Xamarin today, as I am, I mean, uh, I, I work for Progress Software. Uh, oh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Sam Bussi, by the way. I'm a dev advocate here at Progress Software. I uh, mostly focus on the .NET side of the family. So obviously we are invested in, in .NET tooling and Xamarin tooling, and it's here to stay. Uh, it's here um, until uh, end of next year. And even then you, we will keep on supporting it. Microsoft will keep on supporting it. If you are looking at newer projects that you're building, maybe you will look at Maui, but uh, it's it's fine for the timing. So uh, the timelines have moved a little bit because again, we are living through a global pandemic. Things are, I mean, Microsoft is also trying to take care of customers. So they've decided to move the timelines back a little bit um, to .NET 6. All right, so um, that's what's there. Now let's uh, dig in a little bit. So uh, here are some resources that all of us can kind of look into uh, things that, um, Hang on, let me silence my phone. Okay, things that are uh, good for every .NET developer to uh, look into. So obviously Scott Hanselman and Scott Hunter did a session on the journey to one .NET. So go ahead and give that um, a watch whenever your time permits. They, they have a lot of things they showed off. Now in Maui, we are going to get some interesting things. And we'll, we'll dive into the GitHub stuff in just a bit. But uh, this is what they're promising. And there are some key differences here, key things that... Uh, uh, some of them I'm a little lukewarm, but some I'm actually excited for. So uh, what is key is um, just a unified dev experience here. So they're promising that you'll have a single project. So if you look at, um, I'll pull up a Xamarin Forms project once I get to Visual Studio. So right now with Xamarin Forms, you get one .NET standard library, which is shared, and then you have platform-specific project libraries 
um, and folders for .NET or for iOS, Android, or any other platform you want to support. Hey, Joe. Good to see you in the chat room, Joe. Good to see you. So with MAUI, the goal is uh, we won't have those platform-specific projects anymore. It's all going to be one single project. And you're going to have folders that are like platforms. And within those folders, we can do specific things. So like this example here. Um, so this is us kind of going into native land because uh, Android, iOS, and Windows maybe have different implementations of um, how things work. Um, yeah, so Joe is saying, uh, oh, I see what you're saying, Joe. Yeah, so my Twitter handle, based on like the frame, it changes color, so it becomes hard to read. I'm not that important, Joe. I'm not that important. So I, I am okay with uh, my Twitter handle not being legible all the time but yes you're good point I, I can move it around somewhere okay so um, essentially these platform specific things will let us do platform specific uh, API level things if we needed to or write custom renderers like type things for each platform if you wanted to um, but then the nice thing is like we have always had um, <laughs> Joe is encouraging me to be important. No, I think what this past week has shown us is we are, I mean, there are bigger things to kind of watch out for in, 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 the, in the community. Uh, folks are hurting. So uh, I think like uh, folks who have not experienced the kind of uh, pain and suffering that uh, brings some of this history, we can just listen and learn. I think we, we speak too much sometimes. We, we just don't listen to some of the folks who matter. So I'm, I'm really trying to listen. Uh, so um, essentially, this is a good change because um, we used to have iOS and Android folders and we would put images and fonts and other platform specific things in those folders. And when we did MS build out of those folders, that's where it grabbed the resources. But now they're saying they're going to do some magic behind the scenes to give you um, one place to host your fonts and your images. Which again, I'll, I'll see it how this is working. I'll see it, uh, believe it when I see it working. But that's the promise. It's one place, okay. Uh, and uh, the uh, the multi-targeting thing is nice because then you can have the target framework be not just .NET six, but you can do iOS, Android, and other things if you need to. So all of these are welcome changes. Now, in terms of um, the UI stack, like I was saying. Uh, you get a few options and this is where um, uh, things get a little interesting and I think in the blog post uh, there was one thing they actually didn't mention because I think this is cooking and uh, we, we're not we're not sure exactly where like this thing is going to land so uh, XAML informs developers have always done XAML right and that's our UI stack now you can also describe the visual tree in um, in C sharp um, but that's that all stays. So if you are doing XAML um, and if you want to do like MVVM type design, uh, so you have model, view and view model, you want to have separation of concerns, you can still do that. This is a standard way we do XAML and C Sharp nowadays. Um, you have a XAML stack which can data bind. Uh, so this one is a click event handler. And then every time you click on the button, the text of the button changes because we are incrementing the count. So this is standard and you can still uh, do that all day in Maui. Uh, the tiger says, as a content creator, you have a good platform to both listen and speak. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, that stays, but what is new are these uh, two different ways of building up the UI stack. And I see what they're doing essentially. So XAML informs, uh, for better or worse, targets XAML developers and .NET developers heavily. It's one of the easiest ways for us to take our code to iOS and Android and other platforms. But we are a little, um, the, the barrier to entry is a little high because we are not as inviting to other technologies. Uh, so the web folks, uh, folks who haven't done XAML, they look at me and like, this is very verbose. It's, it's, it's a lot to get into. Like the tooling is very rich, but you have to really learn all of that stuff. So uh, I think choice and flexibility is important, and that's what they're trying to do. Just kind of bring in other folks into uh, the .NET stack and yet be able to write .NET and C Sharp and uh, maybe other ways of rendering your UI, and yet you are still within MAUI. So MVU is a very common design pattern. Uh, this is the model view updater, and this is very common in, uh, I think Flutter does something similar. React definitely does uh, state management. So this is another way in which we can have a state uh, tied to each view. So the view is just a static view. And then the state, the model essentially uh, drives the view. And anytime 
the state changes uh, the in, in the model, the view gets to update itself. So it's kind of the data, uh, the hot reload, the data binding thing is kind of um, nicer in, in MVU. So uh, we'll, we'll dive into some of this. So looking ahead, uh, transitioning into they're saying, yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, you can also wait. I'm sure there will be some like some of these like try convert tools when Maui hits. Uh, timeline November 2021. So we are a bit away, but again, expect the previews to hit uh, this year. Um, and we talked about Xamarin, Xamarin Forms. So that's where we are. So this is what Microsoft put out. And if you are interested, um, where do you start? Where do you start diving in? And this is actually a great time to work with Microsoft uh, and tell them your concerns about how you want to see things moving forward. So if I follow this uh, GitHub repo.net Maui link, uh, this is where you land. And this is, I think, where you are seeing uh, most of the work uh, that they're putting out. And I don't think there is a lot of runnable code right now. They're just setting things up. Um, and actually, hang on, let me show you this. Um, David Ortno, uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's one of the program managers over uh, at Microsoft uh, focused on uh, Xamarin Forms. And he uh, he also runs a few other things, uh, but he is uh, he's awesome. And he put out a link uh, for a list of things that one should care about with Maui. One of them was like they, they did some um, a deep dive sessions. So James Clancy and Swiki uh, did a MVU renderers and some of those things that they dived into. Um, Kim uh, Philpotts did another thing, but this is the one that you should go into, like building native apps for devices with .NET. Do a search on this, and you land on this uh, channel line video that uh, David did with my good friend Maddie Leisure. And here's a little news: uh, next week, right now or right this time, uh, so Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern time, I'm going to have Maddie uh, join us for the stream, and I'm going to put her in a hard spot because I'm going to ask her all the questions that we cannot answer today. Uh, but it, what's happening is like this is very early, so they're building up some of the tooling. Uh, it's just not out yet. So I'm going to ask her to show me a few things and then ask her some difficult questions. So what I wanted to uh, bring up maybe, let's see if this will actually fire up. I think I have my volume muted. Just thinking. Come on, Chrome. Did it stop? Okay, I'll refresh. I want to show you one thing that they, one slide that they had was that was pretty fun to look into as just like how things are updating because there are two namespace changes that are really important. And it looks like this video is struggling to come up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll hydrate as I wait. Hello, welcome to building and native apps for any device with .NET. The volume off. There you go. Okay, um, I want to show you one particular slide, um, if I can. This is still them talking about um, uh, .NET and Xamarin. So this is the Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android that I talked about. It's all evolving. So .NET new, iOS and Android. So this all comes into CLI tooling. Now the big change for this is you are actually going to see. Xamarin Dev now possible with Visual Studio Code. So it's always been Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac. So these are the big IDs. Now you can also do stuff with Visual Studio Code. And the reason is they are integrating the CLI tools. So you can kick off a build. Um, so we switch from MS build to .NET build and you can fire up your simulator once it's wired up to Visual Studio Code. So that's a welcome change. And let me see if I can stop right there. Right here. Uh, no, next one. Hang on. I'm trying to show you one slide if I can. This is where they go into all the code stuff. And this is the same screenshot that you see the .NET schedule. Did I miss them? Uh, so I'm essentially trying to show you the mapping of two namespaces. So what is Xamarin Essentials? becomes uh, system.devices and yep that's it right there okay so with maui once we get to um, the end of this year once we have the preview bits and once we have dotnet 6 previews this is what you're going to see what we know as xamarin forms all of our namespaces will translate into system.maui 
So yes, your existing projects will need to be upgraded um, or evolved. And then, sorry about the background. I don't know if the uh, microphone caught it. My son is um, having a tantrum, which is the norm nowadays with all of us being home. Um, but then uh, Xamarin Essentials, which is the NuGet package that we use to get access to all of the native I APIs, that's evolving into system.devices. And then we will have a file new experience. So you can say file new in Visual Studio and go multi-platform app UI, and, or you can do .NET new MAUI. So I saw uh, David use this, and I wanted to use it. It's not out there for us to use yet, because they're, they're working on this. So what can we do? Uh, so this is the Maui um, home, right? And if I scroll down, they talk about uh, ver various things as to what platforms they can hit. Uh, they have a nice FAQ uh, that we can go into, but I think there was a link to a sample. The two things I wanna show you. Okay, so see active development is happening here. Samples may be found here. So this is Jonathan Peppers, Reddit, and those guys over in the Xamarin Engineering Org who are maintaining this. So they have um, these samples out there on which they are just playing around. Now, I'm told that this does not have the MAUI-style projects, the MAUI-style tooling built in. This is just a playground. Um, but I did uh, pull, the, pull this down and see what we could work out. So <laughs> here's the first thing. First, install the latest master build of .NET 6. And when you follow that, you realize that there is no .NET 6 out yet because this is very early days, right? So the max you can get right now, I'm on a Mac here right now. This one here is, um, let's see. Uh, so you can get .NET 5 preview 7.2. That's the best you can get, right? That's the latest. There is no .NET 6 around. So clearly this is something that will be updated as we go along. Um, but I was curious, like they have this hello Android, hello iOS, and hello platform. Would this start working in .NET 5? And then the answer is, I think, uh, still too early days. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you what this project looks like once we pull this up. So I'm going to get Visual Studio for Mac out. And let's see, I might go into this one. The .NET 5 samples, even though it's actually .NET 6 samples, is what the repo says right now. All right, so what you have here is hello uh, world type things and it's doing the restore and they say clearly like in the repo, um, the restore may not work for everything. Um, so it will not get some of the NuGet packages and the dependencies because those are I think internal. Um, hmm, is my stream okay? Uh, I look very pixelated. Oh, maybe I'm good, okay. Um, so, um, I don't think we will have everything working. Packages are restored with warnings. So, essentially, once you open up that uh, repo, you're going to have uh, five solutions. There's a hello Android that I took out. There's a hello iOS. Uh, and this hello forms is the thing. So, this hello iOS is essentially .NET on iOS. And the hello forms iOS is essentially Xamarin forms, the evolution, like MAUI on iOS. Um, Okay, yeah, stream looks good. It's probably my browser that is uh, looking a little awkward. Okay, so if I dig into this, you will see uh, what the dependencies are here. So right out of the gate here, you'll notice that the framework dependency is a .NET Core 5 uh, uh, Preview 7.2. I gotta watch my time. Okay, 10:30. Uh, 7.2 is what we're doing, and then if I look into Hello from iOS what you see is uh, Netcore app 5 and and I think they have Xamarin Forms somewhere. Okay, right there is Xamarin Forms. So they are right now, de are depending on Xamarin Forms. But uh, since again, these are early bits, I could not actually get this to work. So I'll show you what it does. Like if I do a start, um, essentially it, it does the build. So it is, it is doing the build there, but it, it just doesn't have all of the pieces to grab and run. All right, so uh, let's see, chat room. Inox Jr. Coded Live is live streaming about Xamarin. Yes, I am. I'm live streaming about Xamarin. I'm just playing around. There's not much out there right now. Um, so on and off pixelation here as well. I don't know why. Why is it getting pixelated? I don't have any drop frames. My uh, network looks okay. So hopefully it's a one-off blip. 
Um, so you, you saw that error. So essentially what it's complaining about is, hey, I, I cannot self-contain myself, so I don't have the .NET framework that I need. And if I look into like what this guy depends on right now, uh, project file, so oh, let's bump this up a little bit. So it is depending on Netcore 5, uh, 5, which is .NET uh, 5, but it's not meant to work like this, right? Um, <laughs> Minecraft Sam is the new name. Yes, I'm all pixeled. I would much rather not show myself. I'm good with uh, pixels. Uh, so it's not working because it, this is not meant to work this way. So essentially, it, they are depending on Xamarin Forms right now and running on .NET 5, which is okay. And that's kind of what we will see in this November and moving on to 2021. But this is not MAUI. This has got nothing to do with MAUI because this is not running on .NET 6 yet. Um, so uh, this thing is not working and if, if you look at just the iOS uh, project or the Hello Forms iOS, if I go into options, like this project is just not set up right. So if I go into config, um, maybe not, let me go into config here on the solution, build configurations. So configuration mappings, right? See, this is where I'm supposed to be able to run this on the iOS simulators, but it, it just gives me like a red flag for some reason. So it, it is not liking this at all. It's not meant to run on the simulator or I'm doing something wrong. So it, this thing is not deploying. And there, there isn't much code out here. So uh, like hello forms.ios pretty much looks like a Xamarin Forms solution. Actually, this is the iOS part of Xamarin Forms. So whatever you was the iOS specific folder in Xamarin Forms, that's what this one is. Um, okay, yeah, my good friends are bothering me. <laughs> That's Ivana and the tiger trying to take care of me. Uh, so this one here, like it, it doesn't look any different. Like this is the app XAML, um, is how the project starts up. It's just it's regular main page, uh, XAML as well. So nothing changes here. This looks very much like Xamarin from. So I, I think there's just a disconnect right now when they say, go check out the samples here. This is, this is not MAUI. This is still Xamarin Forms trying to run on .NET 5. Um, and I, I didn't see any um, runnable things uh, in terms of .NET 6 runtime yet because the uh, thing is not out. But there are other things we can work around it. So uh, let me show you um, where I was tinkering around. Um, and I, I could not get um, the Hello iOS uh, CS Pro thing to work either. It, it's just complaining. I don't have a runtime. Um, so that's where uh, that stopped. But then if you look into the other stuff, uh, this is where it gets interesting. So the MVU stuff, right? So multiple ways of rendering it. So the one thing that they did not mention in this blog post was the Blazor way of rendering it. So I'm, I was excited more on the Blazor side. It is still experimental. So I'll show you both. So this is the experimental mobile Blazor bindings. So if you use Blazor today for your web applications, this has got no WebAssembly, nothing going on that's Blazor related, but you're essentially taking the Blazor component model, the rendering style, um, and bringing it into um, native mobile land. And essentially, I'm seeing the pixelations again. That is very weird. Without any network blips and drop frames, I'm seeing pixelations. Sorry about that, folks, on the chat room. Um, so essentially, the mobile Blazor bindings are for you to write Blazor type syntax and um, be able to render native Xamarin Forms uh, UI uh, as a response to that Blazor uh, UI model. Um, yeah, I'm back to being Minecraft, Sam. I think that may be my nickname. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll put up my uh, fighting uh, emoji because it is trying to fight me. Uh, and then the other way of doing this is MVU, which is um, the model view updater. And on this front, um, the thing that I wanted to kind of dig around is um, this man, James Clancy. He also is uh, somebody who works on uh, with the Xamarin team. And he has put out this framework, which is like this came before Maui. Uh, I think he was just tinkering around with a, a few very smart folks. Uh, so this thing is called Comet. And essentially this is model view update. And uh, the point is you will have uh, a model uh, that has some state. And then uh, there's a view which is meant to be a little dumb, but it does have the data binding built in. And then anytime the bindings or anything you trigger with commands, 
uh, you update the model and then the uh, state gets pushed down into the view. So it's kind of like a one-way flow of data. Uh, so this thing works and it's it looks a little different. So as, um, as XAML developers, we are used to so much of XAML tooling and so much of Visual Studio tooling. Some of this web way of doing things maybe looks a little awkward to us initially, but we have to get over the fact because this is what invites other people into our ecosystem. So this is just opening the funnel a little bit. Uh, so this is just a different way of rendering a visual tree. It is going to be rendering the same uh, Xamarin Forms native UI on each platform. Uh, so this is different and Hot Reload, all of those things are nicely built in. So you can actually pull down this project and um, James actually has like a nice like getting started guide. So the nice thing is uh, right now this is working for like iOS and Mac OS uh, and this is all running on Xamarin Forms. This is not MAUI uh, yet. Uh, but it's 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 there uh, to start tinkering around and he's got a little template so I can do .NET new uh, I'll, I'll show you what that does essentially uh, If I pull up my CLI here and maybe bump up my fonts a little bit so I can do .NET I'll show you the things that I have installed and how these are um, Living side by side. So if I list out my SDKs you see that on this machine, I started with like .NET Core 2.0 um, and then I went all the way to 3.1. This is the, I think, the long-term support version um, and I'm back to being Minecraft Sam. <laughs> I'll have to tinker around this. I, I did uh, change the bitrate a little bit, so I'm, I'm um, pushing out more pixels. I don't know why that would make me more pixelated. It should be the reverse. Um, but here you see that I have .NET Core 3.1 and then I have um, uh, .NET Core 5 or .NET 5, which is not core anymore. And I have two previews here. I have 4.2 and I have 6.2. So that's what this stuff is running on. And if I do uh, .NET New, you'll see, oop, not Mew, <laughs> .NET New. So you'll see the templates that I have installed. So this is all the .NET stuff. And uh, right now, notice how I cannot do anything Xamarin. I cannot do .NET new MAUI yet, but it's coming. Uh, but what you can do is this thing that I was showing you, the Comet uh, thing. Uh, um, Clancy does have uh, a template built out. So I can do .NET new Comet, and that puts out um, a nice project scaffolding for me. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. Um, so I went out here and where's my CLI? Comet, okay. So let's go in here. So I'm in CLI. And let's see, what did I call it? Uh, Comet Hello World, okay. So I can do Comet Hello World. And inside I have, oh, I have another folder. Comet Hello World. And I do have uh, Visual Studio Code in my path, so I can do code dot. Um, so that should pull up um, Visual Studio Code for me. Hmm, why is this pixelation happening? This is very weird. It's kind of on and off, and I, I don't see any network blips on my side, so, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so here is um, what that template is uh, pushing out. So essentially, um, yeah, this is Visual Studio Code. So um, envision that once MAUI hits, uh, <laughs> taking the brand to the fullest. Yes, Joe, thank you. Uh, so essentially, um, envision that, um, yeah, Greg DeFill is saying it's making it hard to follow. Uh, I can change my bitrate down a little bit on the fly. Let me try doing that and see how this holds up. Hang on one second. Um, so I'm going to pull back a little bit. Okay, so I don't know if that means I will drop a few frames because oh, well, the other thing is like I am right now on my MacBook uh, and uh, I did not 
push down the resolution today. So I, I guess I am pushing out quite a few, and I'm I'm in 1080p. So hopefully the uh, bit rates can catch up. Yeah, the super large. I think the, that's what it is, Joe. Uh, I, I did not um, pull back my resolution enough. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to go up a little bit here. And I have to be done in 20 minutes because Ed wants to be on. So we'll we'll see. Um, sorry about that. I'll I'll try to fix it up um, on next stream. But this is kind of what you get uh, with a project like this, and uh, envision that you can pull up your uh, command prompt um, here in, um, in in Visual Studio Code, and you'll be able to do uh, .NET uh, build on on a Maui project. And um, yeah, Joe, I'm I'm the same way. I, I do stream at 1080p as well with with the MacBook. It's just this resolution is still the native one, which is rather high. Uh, so um, envision that you will be able to do a build here. So this is the difference. Right now, if you look at uh, this project structure, like this one here is depending on .NET Standard 2.0, which is exactly what uh, Xamarin Forms does. And uh, so this is not exactly Maui at all. This will be .NET 6 once uh, we get the preview bits. And it, it is depending on Xamarin Essential. This, so this is not Maui at all, but it's very similar. What it's, what it's doing is giving you the MVU way of rendering it. So let me pull up the same project and I'll show you what that does. Because uh, if, if I pull up the same project in Visual Studio, then I actually do get to use MS Build. And I don't have to remember the exact syntax. Uh, I can just fire it up. Okay, Visual Studio is loading up. Pixels, pixels, update pixels. There we go. Go push our pixels. All right. Uh, so here is the same project, and uh, you'll notice that I have the iOS build in here. So if I go and can I not run this? Hang on. Generic simulator. Actually, let me close this. Making sure I'm not holding up any files that Visual Studio would like to build. So let me close that one time and open it up back up again. Okay, so now I should be able to, well, I'll wait for it to restore packages. Yeah, it looks like my resolution being high is really contributing to the pixels. Sorry about that. Uh, so, let me fire this up. So this is uh, not MAUI, but I think we're going to see syntax very similar to this once MAUI hits. So, um, since I am already on, uh, on a Mac, it knows that I have Xcode, it knows how to do the build and um, uh, bring the bits back. So this should be the Comet project. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> okay, chat room. Uh -huh. uh, my good friend Greg Levin again. Hey, Greg, good to see you. That's a loaded question. What resolution do we stream from Max? Um, Let's have an offline conversation because there's a lot going on. You can, uh, it's, it's a balancing act between resolution and how many pixels you want to push up. What's your network strength? What's your bit rate? What's your audio? It's a balancing act. Um, so I'm happy to dive into that. Uh, yes. So this is the project that you get and it's just a, um, incrementer as you can see, but this is nothing like the way Xamarin Forms works. This is purely MVU. Right, so if I stop this and if I show you what this looks like, all right, app delegate, all of that is actually in the shared project. So main page.cs. So this is how it's it, it is working, right? So this is main page, uh, kind of similar to what um, uh, what Xamarin Forms would do. It's a it's a content page, so there's like an initial view. That's the main page, and it is inheriting of view, which is this one's comments view, but it is like Xamarin Forms view, essentially behind the covers. And then you have that state, right? And this is again kind of like the state management thing uh, we do. Um, so this one is just in instantiating, like you can do state of the type T, 
and then you can have a counter and this body is what is building the visual tree uh, and this VS stack I think it's meant to be uh, so it it has some defaults notice how it's alignment to center and the floating some of it is just kind of a little hidden from you you can go into these properties but essentially what um, what they do is um, uh, they, they are essentially rendering a stack layout for Xamarin Forms behind the scenes and it is uh, giving you the text property which is uh, the counter and then it's giving you that button so all of the um, hey Sarah uh, good to see you uh, see the folks in uh, in my team folks in the chat room uh, I am seeing folks here who are here for the express purpose of kicking me out so we can talk about the cooler things that is blazer so i get it um so uh, here's my text and here's my button and uh, essentially when you uh, click on that button this uh, this is the new way of writing uh, that click even handler so when you click on the button the value of that counter goes up um, so that that's MVU and this is different and people are having lots of conversations about this so I'll show you some of this stuff so um, this being <coughs> the .NET MAUI repo there are lots and lots of issues out of it and people are actively talking about it so I, I encourage all of you to go and uh, check this stuff out I'll, I'll tell you two things that do matter quite a bit yeah Minecraft Sam uh, yeah, could be could be just a uh, resolution today, um, but looks like I'm okay now. Um, so there are two uh, big things that people are debating. One is like once we get to Maui, what is going to be the XAML stack uh, for us to lay out our UI, right? And XAML forms, for better or worse, has always had a specific version of XAML. Uh, this is the XAML that is catered towards mobile uh, dev, uh, so iOS and Android. So things are just different compared to uh, what people call like the real XAML or quote unquote the uh, the traditional XAML, which is for Windows. Um, so uh, essentially, what's the chat room saying? Okay, uh, yeah, 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 you're you're all talking about the resolution, same thing. So essentially, um, the XAML flavor that you get with XAML forms. A lot of folks actually don't like that, and I, I, I see that. I don't mind that at all because I think it it fits very nicely with mobile dev. But folks are asking, like, could we get Windows flavored XAML back into Maui? And the answer I think is going to be tricky because they are not trying to reinvent the wheel and change everything about it. But maybe there could be shims. Uh, essentially, this is my good friend uh, Lance McCarthy, who's uh, a devoted Windows uh, XAML developer. He um, put out a thing that I thought was interesting. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Lance. Okay, so here, here's Lance uh, saying, uh, just go do these things. So instead of calling it a stack layout, call it a stack panel, entry, call it a text box, label, call it a text block. And there are things about the width and the height request uh, things in XAML from XAML that have always been different. So fix up those things, then we have more alignment. I just don't know how easy of a fix that is for the Maui team, but um, there is uh, there are quite a few very smart engineers and uh, product managers working on this. So we don't know early days. So go and uh, talk to uh, talk to them. The other side of this is even for MVU, um, uh, this uh, uh, issue that I saw was interesting because like this is kind of what we are being asked to do. This is kind of what David Ortno and Maddie uh, showed off uh, during the build session. This is that same VS stack, which is rendering a, a, a stack panel. Uh, and this sounds a little verbose, right? So you are rendering a label and all of the properties of the label are just hanging right off underneath that. Same with the button. And uh, it, it is still like the button click event handlers are all right here. I, I get all of that. But uh, here was a nice um, issue to say, can you make it a little more concise? Uh, kind of more similar to maybe how MVVM would render things right now with XAML. Um, do the color, do the margin, all of those things, make them a little more concise. Um, link to Lance's GitHub repo. Yes, I'll, I'll paste. In fact, so if you, if you go to .NET MAUI um, uh, repo and just check out the issues, you can see like there are 100 plus issues because people are talking about this stuff. Uh, this is the XAML flavor thing, Greg. So if you want to uh, chime in, it's issue number 43. I'm going to put that in uh, the chat room here. 
So this, uh, I mean, a lot of XAML folks care about this stuff because, um, again, some folks have complained about it. So uh, maybe they will do something about it. Uh, I don't see a very easy way, but uh, maybe there's something to it. And Minecraft Sam is back. Uh, so I'll keep tinkering around more. I think I, I went a little too high with my res and my bitrate today. Uh, but here, uh, so you, you get what's happening here. So multiple ways of rendering this. I actually like this. The, the suggestion that uh, was for MVU. Let's change it up a little bit so it's a little more concise. And uh, maybe this is not something the XAML developers in the house jump at because this is different for us. And we can always happily keep on doing XAML and MVVM. But this is just a different way. Uh, maybe if you're coming from a web background, this is a little more uh, friendlier. This is a lot more uh, something that you're more accustomed to. So, so that's where things are. Um, uh, let's see, I got nine minutes. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep playing on with this, the Comet uh, project, like I showed you. Uh, this is James Clancy. Um, and I will, um, I'll try to write some code and, and see how I can bring over Xamarin Forms skills over to the MVU way of writing up the visual tree and uh, see, see how that functions. All right. Uh, I think that's all the stuff that is out there for Maui right now. Uh, so you know the folks who are responsible for this. Um, so reach out to them. I think in terms of program managers, it is um, it is David Otno, Maddie Leisure, and uh, Dimitri Lylin actually who runs a lot of the <coughs> a lot of the XAML tooling. I think he is coming on as a product manager for for Maui as well. So that's all, that's all good. Uh, some very uh, smart folks working on this. So let's go talk to them. Let's make sure we are doing the right things and uh, this is a little way out still but super early days so this is the perfect time to have those architectural conversations and uh, chickens are back uh, in the chat room because Sarah is here I'll give you a chicken dance I have multiple chickens here Sarah um, in my uh, stream deck like I have one row that's all chickens so <laughs> folks in the chat room we have some custom emojis so you can do chickens you can do our ninjas it's all the fun stuff Okay, so um, I'm gonna maybe um, I'm gonna maybe stop here today because, uh, like I said, uh, I am gonna be kicked out because Blazor takes over, and that's all good. Um, uh, I did actually do a few experiments where we were able to run render Xamarin Forms UI with Blazor, and actually um, we do have like if you're using like Telerik Xamarin bits, we actually put out some experimental Blazor bindings uh, so you can do Blazor wrappers to render your Xamarin Forms UI. So just more options, more flexibility for devs. Uh, it's never a bad thing. Minecraft chicken, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so folks, that's all uh, I had um, essentially just uh, tinker around um, and try to understand Maui a little bit more. Like I said, I will actually get Maddie on uh, next week, so we will be able to ask her lots of uh, difficult questions and hopefully have her um, uh, show us uh, some demos that we cannot see yet, because I know they have the CLI tools uh, for Maui. I know they have um, uh, internal builds of what they're thinking for .NET 6. It's just not out yet, so we can't build against it. Um, so, yeah, uh, would be uh, something to look forward to next week. I'm very excited, and uh, hopefully I'll show her the pain points, the things that I cannot run yet, and uh, maybe uh, she'll be able to show us uh, demos. So, yeah, so chat room, uh, Joe, yeah, we will see you uh, in a bit. And uh, folks, uh, hang around here if you uh, if you are here for the Blazor thing. Uh, that starts up in probably less than five minutes, um, right at the top of the hour. Uh, and uh, Ed will take you in um, into Blazor land. I think he's got a very special guest on with him today as well. So this week we are doing all things Blazor and just showcasing our love for it. Um, we put in a lot of investments and a lot of efforts into supporting Blazor and being able to render our UI, Teleric UI, through Blazor. And you see all of that. Hey, Mr. Spoofy, yes. Blazor, 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 all things. Just Blazor, Blazorify the world if you can. Uh, so, uh, yes. And uh, Blazor will actually, they, they don't have this in this um, uh, post from Scott Hunter, but I think Blazor UI, the mobile Blazor boundings, uh, will definitely have an impact on uh, Maui once we get to the Xamarin Forms uh, side of things. Okay, all right, so um, yeah, I know uh, the chat room, I think you're, some of you are here for Blazor, so stick around and I will hand this over to Ed. So you will see a, 
I drop because uh, you know, we're not going to continue the stream. So I'll drop and then Ed will pick up in like four minutes and uh, he'll talk all things Blazor. Okay. So uh, folks in the chat room, I appreciate you. Um, like I said in the beginning, these are difficult times uh, for lots of reasons. Obviously, we have a global pandemic. There is uh, There are cries for uh, social justice uh, and that is something that affects all of us. So let's all listen. Uh, let's all care and learn and um, uh, have empathy for uh, what's going on in our society so we can all be better human beings and we can love each other more. So on that note, uh, we love you all. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, come and join us again uh, for uh, the Blazor stream in like three minutes and then I will do another stream tomorrow which is more of a chat show and then the same thing renews again next week. Uh, we stream about a bunch of different tech. So Thank you. Uh, you're all awesome. And thank you, Sarah. And we shall see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.